Now, Angola's Kwanzaa fell to a new 25-year low against the dollar, its lowest level since 1999. This after the oil-producing nation's central bank ruled out intervening in the market to stabilize the currency. The Kwanzaa has shed over 11% of its value since the start of the year. And Rydal Marcus, sub-Saharan Africa macroeconomist at APSA CIB, joins me now for further analysis. Rydal, thanks so much for your time. Now, right at the top, talk to us about the factors weighing on the Kwanzaa. Well, certainly, first of all, um, the economy has obviously been under pressure for a while, and that is just reflecting the weaker oil production. Mm -hmm. um, oil production has been stuck at 1.1 million barrels for a couple of years now. Um, and during that whole time, we've seen the currency come under pressure. But more importantly, in recent times, we've seen the uh, gold, uh, excuse me, the oil price uh, weakening to $70, and it has picked up since but certainly as one of the major oil producers and it's due to its inability to produce higher oil price, that has been reflected in the currency. So the currency is now down, I think, 11 to 12 percent against the U.S. dollar so far this year alone. And it is very likely that we're going to see further weakness from the currency unless, of course, oil prices um, rises further from here on or production of oil increases dramatically. We know that's not going to happen. Yeah or when, when there's intervention from the uh, central bank, which is most likely, but we have seen statements that the central bank says um, they might not uh, want to intervene uh, in the market just yet. Let's talk about that in greater detail. What can the central bank actually do to boost the um, currency? As you mentioned, uh, the governor last week did mention that they wouldn't be intervening anytime soon. Yeah. So that's right. Well, we've learned from Nigeria, of course, that there's so many different things that you can do. For example, I think that there was a, a instruction this morning or earlier today um, for the private sector and, and, and those that, that receive dollars to make at least one third available to, to the market, um, et cetera, and stop hoarding the dollars. So there's all kinds of regulations, um, mm. as I said, that, that you can potentially think of. Um, of course, one would be to maybe think about hiking your... Your, your, your policy rate, you can also try to provide a disincentive to, to import, of course, and, uh, you know, try to control demand. Um, over the longer term, of course, you can focus more as a government, might not be a central bank function, but as a government to try and uh, boost your exports, you know, exports of diamonds as well, in addition to oil. There's a whole range of things that you could potentially do. The question really is, how quickly do they want yeah. this currency to turn around? If they want a more immediate intervention, that means that more, you know, uh, uh, immediate effect on the currency, then they will have to go the regulatory route. Um, but it is something that, that they would probably want to avoid, given that they've embarked on this set of uh, reforms in the past couple of years, uh, basically since 2017, and they've tried to um, liberalize the exchange rate regime. So it's not probably, a, 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 a you know, an avenue that they want to explore mm -hmm. just yet. But at the same time, when a currency has, you know, continued to weaken and it's as weak as it is currently, yeah. it is going to be inflationary. Inflation mm -hmm. is already over 30 percent. It has been coming down for the past two months, but it's still at, you know, at over 30 percent, still at very unacceptable high levels. The uh weaker economy has also resulted in the central bank not wanting to hike the policy rate mm -hmm. too much. So they might need to think about what is really important to them at this point in time, uh, trying to to, you know, uh, uh, control the currency's weakness. I was about to say, they're in really a catch-22 and they're in a hard spot, um, considering that, you know, um, they don't want to intervene when it comes to strengthening the uh, currency, but there is a volatility that comes with just leaving it as it is at levels that it is at. Now, sticking with central banks, the Fed has started lowering interest rates, which has made the U.S. dollar weaker and helped emerging market uh, currencies since more rate cuts are expected we do um, expect more dollar weakness how will angola's currency perform compared to its emerging market peers let's say yeah look it's a little bit unclear i mean um unlike some of the other markets angola's doesn't screen high as an investable market when it comes to fixed income yeah. for example so it's debatable to what extent uh, the 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 uh, Kwanzaa will will benefit from that, but at the same time, 
you know, this currency has always been driven by all revenues, all, uh, all flows, uh, particularly revenues, of course. Um, so the question, therefore, is then how much does that play a role? Um, I suppose that is a dominant issue so far for Angola. And yeah. when you have a situation where there's large external debt repayments that need to be done, there's uh, limited oil revenues that need to come that is coming in. There's high demand for imports because of infrastructure development and you know uh, 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 strong private sector uh, activity and investment. Then the currency is bound to be under pressure. Whether the U.S. Fed has cut its policy rate or not, um, I think this currency at this point in time reflects a lot more. Um, local issues and the weaker dollar will probably not provide the kind of support that um, it might uh, provide to other markets such as, you know, Kenya and 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 the like. You know, um, <coughs> Rydal, the currency devaluation issue has been felt across a number of African countries. You mentioned the Nigerian Naira. We've had the Kwacha, uh, the Kwanzaa as well, as well as the um, Zambian Kwacha which have been um, said to be the world's worst performing currencies. What is the, at the heart of these issues? Um, is this due to over-reliance on commodities or is there a need for some you know, structural reforms to boost the economy? I think you, you have touched on a very important point there. Um, the reforms are certainly necessary. Um, in Nigeria's case, for example, for many years, under the Buhari administration, you know, the multilaterals were calling for reforms and Buhari were, was not willing to do those reforms. And those reforms were centering around um, letting the currency go, you know, liberalizing the exchange rate regime and fixing a whole lot of other issues within the economy. Um, and quite often we find that many of these commodity driven e uh, uh, economies do uh, like to manage their, their currencies in some way. So it is important to embark on those reforms. And we've got the IMF involved in many of these markets. Mm -hmm. uh, in Nigeria's particular case, we've had, uh, you know, the, the freeing up of the currency. And that has sort of seen the currency plunging significantly from, you know, less than 500 naira to the, do to the dollar uh, just over a year ago to 1,600 uh, against the dollar at the moment. Um, other markets, uh, in, in, in the case of Ghana, for example, we had the debt restructuring issues. Zambia also debt restructuring. And if you can recall, in Kenya's case, it was an issue around fiscal sustainability yeah. where they obviously avoided, um, you know, a default scenario, but um, there were concerns about how they were going to finance the 2024 euro bonds. So that drove the currency weaker. And as soon as, um, you, you know, there was comfort um, that they are able to refinance that euro bond after they issued a new euro bond earlier this year, the Kenyan currency uh, started to, 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 to rally. So, you know, you have to look at each and every one of these economies. They've got very different mm -hmm. kind of issues driving those currencies. But I think reform is at the, at the heart of it. I think uh, there's a, a strong reform agenda coming through across many of these African nations. Um, and hopefully we'll, we'll see, you know, uh, more stable and, and, and less volatile currencies going forward. But... You know, when you have an environment as is at the moment with extreme weather conditions, mm. um, you've got geopolitical concerns, um, etc. You know, it just makes it so difficult to 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 control the currencies in any way or to uh, prevent you know these kind of volatility that we've seen so far. Right, well, unfortunately, we have to leave it there. Thanks so much for your time and those insights. That was Rydal Marcus, a sub-Saharan Africa macroeconomist at APSA CIB.